Hi, this is Mary Morrissey. This is part two of a four-part video series on how to take uh, your, the very thing you're dealing with, 24 hours in a day, a life you're living, the opportunity to live a life you really love living or a life where you're settling and really dream not only in your mind but right into your life, a life that you really love living. So I promised you that in this video, we would talk about how to keep your dream alive, how to take the setbacks, the kind of disappointments that can happen in everyday life and literally use that very same experience that might be set back on one level, but actually becomes the very stuff that keeps you going, that actually helps you keep going forward. How the part of you that wants to go forward can win over the part of you that would turn back and turn down your dream. All right. There's things that happen in life. I mean, there are setbacks. There are the facts. There's the amount of money you have. There's what's going on in the economy. There's circumstances and situations that every single one of us face. But once you dream a dream, that dream begins to exist not only in the mind or in your imagination, it literally can begin to exist for you not only in your imagination, but through your imagination, you can literally begin to have the experience of your dream coming alive if you will do something with the E part of dream. You have de desire and discontent. You have set realistic sequential goals for it. And when you get to the E, this is where out of imagination, you want to begin to really live from and experience explore the whole energy of what it's like to be the person who is living the life you're imagining. That you absolutely and, and consistently, as much you ca as you can, but on a repetitive basis, you spend some time imagining living the life that you're dreaming. Because once you begin to explore the energy, you have a, uh, opportunity and you have access to different ideas than if you're just sitting and wishing and hoping. The person who is sitting and wishing and hoping has no real relationship with their dream. It's out there somewhere, someday. And they go around living the same life over and over again. It isn't that they don't have hope. It isn't that they don't have wishes or even what they would call dreams. But we're talking about the science and the art of transforming your life from one state into another. We're dealing with physics. And so the physics of transformation is as much an art and a science as any other art or science that you've studied. There are invisible laws that govern the manifestation of all things. Just as the law of mathematics is invisible to you, but it works with perfection. It is precise. Two and two will never make something other than four. The law of, ele of electricity is invisible to you. And to our, our whole species, the fact that we could have had light wherever we wanted it was not impossible to us, but it was outside our awareness. Uh, so up until about 100 years ago, if you wanted light after dark, you had to light a fire or light an oil lamp, but not today. Not because the law has changed. Our awareness of the laws that are invisible yet govern how much freedom we can have and be and live in. We have more awareness today. And guess what? As you study the art and the science of dream building, the physics of transformation, you literally will have access to a power to transform your results into results that you love living. Now, you have some setbacks, you have some disappointments, you don't have the money yet, you don't know where all the resources are coming from that will help you build that dream that you're holding in your heart and you're living in your mind but you can explore the energy of what it feels like to be the person living that life. So let me tell you about a woman that I know who years ago shared a dream with me. Her name, Goody Cable. Goody loved great conversations. That was one of the things she loved most. And she had, at one point in her life, had started uh, just sharing a little bit of that dream about having a place where people could have great conversations. She grew that into a coffee house in Portland, Oregon called Rimsky Corsa Coffee. And it was a place where great desserts and coffee and even more so great conversations occurred. People would line up around the block on a Friday or Saturday night to have dessert with Goody Cable at Rimsky Corsa Coffee House. And along the way, she dreamed that she wished they could have longer conversations and deeper connections. And she began to dream the possibility of a hotel where people would gather and spend days and they would be a, the, the dining room would be called the table of contents and there would be great book discussions and each room might be decorated uh, in different ways. 
but it first started just as so random gosh I wish we could have longer conversations and then she weaved that idea and dreamed it into what if it were a, a, a hotel and she felt her energy go up when she thought hotel. And, and what if it were at the beach so we would have the great expanse of the ocean in front of us? And she felt her energy go up in that. And, and what if, and what if, and as she began to dream this dream and weave it into a pattern of existence in her mind, in her imagination, and one day it, the idea was that I could have a, a Melville room and I could have a Hemingway room and I, I could have a, 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 a room that would be Dr. Seuss where the kids could stay. And she dreamed this dream up in her mind and she began to explore opportunities to fund that dream. So she went from one bank to another, to another, to another. But here's the interesting thing. Even though Goody had some setbacks, even though Goody had some disappointments, bank after bank after bank turned her down. She'd never run a hotel before. Where was, how was she sure this concept would fly? All of the things that, that an ordinary thinking banker is going to ask somebody. But here's what happened for Goody. Along the way, instead of letting herself get discouraged by the disappointments and the setbacks, she kept exploring the energy of the dream until it became so alive in her. She knew what she felt like standing on the deck overlooking the Pacific Ocean from the upper upper room, the big attic room where the coffee, she imagined it uh, um, on Sunday night. It was the end of the weekend. It was evening time. The, the wind was blowing outside, the wind on the Oregon coast, and the rain was pelting down. And she opened the window and you could hear and feel that fresh rain smell and the sound of the Pacific pounding the beach. And the coffee was down to that last inch of the sludge on a Sunday night after lots of conversation. And she took a big breath and she goes, I love my life. I love these conversations. I love the people that I have the opportunity to help here when they come to have a weekend at the beach. I love that we provide great food in a table of contents restaurant. I love, I love. Bank after bank turned her down. Bank after bank turned her down, but she kept exploring the energy of loving that dream. And Goody did something that very few people do. Goody had written her dream down. She had written her dream down, I am so happy and grateful now that I am the owner of the Sylvia Beach Hotel. And then she described the different kinds of people that come and she said, and it's Sunday night and I'm in the attic room and there are 12 people and we've been in deep and profound conversations. We've talked about it and she named three things that were in that conversation. The coffee's down to the last inch that is a symbol of all the evening that we have spent together and the deep, deep rich conversations. I can smell the ocean air and the salt. I can feel that breeze coming in as I've opened the window out on the Pacific. I can hear the sound of the beach, the ocean pounding on that beach. She literally five cents rised it. She wrote it down so that when the bank said no, Goody had enough relationship with her dream to say, this is not really no from my universe. It's no from this bank. And she did one more thing. She asked for feedback. So what would it take? What would you need to say a yes to me? And that banker would give her an idea. And she used what was showing up as opportunities that looked like problems. Yeah, they look like problems. But she had a methodology for transforming that problem into a real opportunity and there was a test she applied to know what was a real opportunity and what was a distraction. What moved her really towards her dream and what actually unintentionally would move her away from her dream. And that test is something we developed and in the next video I am going to give you the test so that you can then apply it to everything that comes your way and know how to turn a setback into an opportunity and how to test an opportunity and see if it's something that's going to move you towards your dream or actually be a distraction, a delay, and unintentionally actually take you away from that dream that matters to you. Have a great day.